So on September 30th of 1911, around two o'clock in the afternoon, if you were sitting right here, you would have had quite the experience. I'm in Austin, Pennsylvania. Just maybe you would have realized as everyone was yelling and screaming and running for the high ground, you might have realized that the dam a mile and a half up the road broke and you might have a chance. At the time, Austin had just about 3,000 residents. Today, less than 550. So we're gonna start here in Austin, Pennsylvania, and we're going to head up the valley, and we're gonna see if we can find the Bayless Pulp Mill and also the Austin Dam where the failure took place. <laughs> the Austin Dam disaster is the second worst dam failure in Pennsylvania history after the famous Johnstown disaster. 78 people lost their life and the entire town was swept away. George Bayless is often considered the bad guy in this dark drama. He owned the fateful dam and mill. So the dam breaks and it starts its mile and a half journey down Freeman's Run. And about halfway, a little more than halfway down, it runs into a bunch of cordwood. Enough cordwood to cover seven acres a foot deep. And it runs into the Bayless Pulp and Paper Mill, which we're gonna go check out right now. But first, we have to pick our way down this wood dump. Well, that was fun. Looks like it became a little bit of a town dump after a while. I have no idea what this tower is. Take a little ladder there, you can go up a little ways. Looks real safe. Huh. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that was a great idea. Just, you know, smash through the brush. Invite the family over, have a couple of drinks. We don't need where we're going. We don't need no stinking trails. So uh yeah. A little prickly, a little thorny, but that's okay. Because I believe we found the main building. So I think in this area, you gotta be kind of careful. There's probably a lot of holes and stuff. Definitely don't be filming while you're walking around. <laughs> so those must be the pulp tanks. So check it out. It's kind of a precarious perch right there.
gotta be some bones down there. Second floor, I assume. I think there's a basement. Oh, there's a stairwell in there. Excellent. So the uh, dam breaks, it heads down river, and it first gets here. They had a little less warning, maybe seven minutes or so. And uh, there's a bookkeeper named Mary Blates. And she was just minding her own business in her office, and suddenly a grinding wheel came crashing through into her office and trapped her, trapped her leg according to her account. And she is begging her co-workers to go ahead and cut her leg off with an ax so that she can escape. And nobody's gonna volunteer to cut a lady's leg off even if, even if she is trapped because of the flood. Finally, according to her account, her account, a large Polish fellow obliged her, cut her leg off, carried her out of the flood and into, or back to town into the hospital and uh, she survived and wrote about her account, so this is exciting. So uh, yeah, we're gonna head over to the stairwell and see where they go. Oh yeah, great looking stairwells here. That looks uh, safe, I guess. I get new batteries in the old flashlight. Yeah. See, bones down here. Those are white tailed deer bones. Not human. Yeah, much better. Much better light. Ah, look at you there. Femur bone. That looks. That's probably a deer. Or a human. Obviously, a psychopath would live down here and bury his bodies. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's safe. Who the heck walks on that floor? They gotta be crazy. It's just like ready to collapse. Not to mention standing under it. You heard it from me first. Or you probably heard it. Don't come here. Let you know what you're doing. <laughs> Look at that. Now, the dam's breaking again. Uh, no, it's the noon fire alarm. Let's try that. That looks safe. Second floor. Kinda neat how nature reclaims things. That's a rewrite on that floor. So the rough looks real safe. Let's go up there then. Huh? These look like a dream. Yeah. This roof ain't safe. So yeah, it's the Bayless pulp and paper mill. So let's head back to the Jeep and check out the dam. The torrent carrying hundreds of logs and parts of the paper mill rocked and ricocheted down the valley like a huge slithering snake, one witness recounted, moving up one hillside and slithering down another, gathering houses in the process. A quiet rumble that could be heard faintly in Austin grew louder and the roar and the ground shook as the rising mist moved closer to town. Witnesses on the surrounding hillsides could see little or no water, but rolling debris foretold catastrophe. People seemed bewildered as to which way to turn for escape. Some remained in their tracks, transfixed.
There's always got to be one of those guys in the crowd. <clears throat> They sat down on the roof of one of the houses that passed them on the hillside. Six little children were huddled, clinging to one another for protection. As the house was whirled along, another floating building struck it broadside. The children, shaken from their insecure footing, were hurled from the roof and swallowed into the flood. been like 10 minutes no one showed up they're over there by the heavy equipment so let them in there they'll go over and let them know hey how are you that's no problem i uh i left 20 bucks underneath the pad okay. in there Would that need some change no And that just popped out and landed there it as a kind cork. Of blew out. They said like a cork, but between, I think just the pressure of the water and that piece kind of failed pretty drastically. So the big wall of water that came out kind of, of there pushed the rock kind of down. Pushed it down there. So this is. Austin Dam, frozen in time, in its position that it was in when the dam failed. The dam actually started to float and then cracked, and then everything busted open. You can see the uh, style of concrete they did, which wasn't very strong. They didn't use enough re rod. Those walls were supposed to be 30 feet thick, it's like they're about 20 feet thick. So yeah, tried to save some money. The foundation was eroded. Literally picked the dam up. The dam had been bowing for quite a while. And then it just gave way. So right here is where they tried to uh, reinforce behind the dam. And uh, I actually think whole thing was pushed out that far. So the wave came out kind of all at once. It went down to the mill, which is about a mile south. They had uh, five years worth of pulp was stored up there in logs that were five foot long. And the wave came to that and kind of got held up a little bit as it kind of built the water back up. At some point, the water gained enough volume to pick all those bolts up. <laughs> it's like a destructive force of battering rams. And, uh, most of the buildings just got blown away. Uh, on Main Street, which runs perpendicular to the valley, the north side held up for a little while. There was a, like a line of brick buildings. And then the wave kind of went right over top of all of those buildings. So there was people standing up on here. Seriously. And they saw the wave come up over. That's like 30, 40 feet. Yeah. So that was a two-hour conversation with Elvie. He's the president of the association that uh, actually takes care of the dam and the uh, hip camp campground that's here. Mm -hmm. 